more stressful. So it looks stressful for you guys. It looks so it. stressful. So if you can imagine that times maybe 15. How? What do they do? They make you do things a couple of times and things for cameras or something. No, I mean it's just the fact that you've got. So we've got two cameras here, and then oh, everyone so else. There's one above, above the hob as well. So <laughs> in the studios when I was doing it, we had probably about 20 cameras Ooh. plus one of those big ones that kind of hover. You know, those, I don't the jib, overhead one. Jib cameras or jib. something. Yep. Um, so you have two of those. And then you have loads of sound people, and then you've got John and Greg. Plus that you've got like an hour or something to cook, <laughs> like the dish of your life. Are John and Greg there all the time? Yeah. Wow. They actually just watch the whole thing? Yeah. That is pressure. And they are really intense, like as you watch it. Who here are MasterChef fans, by the way? Have you got a show of hands? And who are Bake Off fans? It's kind of the same, actually. Okay, that's good. About the same. Does anyone remember the year that I cooked? And won. Okay, that's nice. Hello. Um, so yeah, basically I won the show four years ago. It was nail biting. It was. I mean, it was hard to watch. It was, it was, it was hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, basically I think, you know, a lot of people, I have this now, like a lot of people who love cooking, they're like, oh, I want to do MasterChef or I want to do Bake Off. My, my advice is go ahead and do it, but don't underestimate how horribly stressful it is and how much they expect from you as well. So I'm just going to grab the frying pan. Um, yeah, I mean, it is, it's hard work, um, particularly with MasterChef. So for me, I applied online, and I think the, the amount of people who applied in my year was something in the region of 25,000 oh online, and then it went down to like 700 who were interviewed face-to-face, -face, and then you get down to the final 70. When you're in the final 70, you're actually cooking for John and Greg. That's insane. It's nuts. How's it? So you're one in 25,000. This isn't working. <laughs> Nigel, <laughs> Nigel, 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 we need help. It's not Hello. Working. Do you mind putting Nigel, this on? Nigel, please help us with the hob. What, what did we press? It's wrong. It's not an induction oh, pan. The wrong, wrong pan. You've got a frying one. We have the wrong pan. There we go. But is your hob at home? The first hurdle. Gas. Is yours at home gas? No, I've is got it, an induction. You've got the same but I've got one that uses any pan. You see, my excuse is I don't be okay. Yeah. So if you put it on like six or something? There you go. Cool. I thought I'd be a hero and help you, but I couldn't. <laughs> Sorry, don't worry. <laughs> okay, so the first dish I'm going to cook is a... Is it Erin Mauritians here? Yay! Oh, oh my goodness! Here. Go ahead. <laughs> Good <job. laughs> um, Okay, so you're going to laugh at my dish. I'm going to cook what we would classify as like a porpoise dish. Egg rogai. It's a favourite! Oh, okay. So egg rogai is basically, um, it's an egg dish, but you make like a really thick chilli tomato base and then you crack the eggs. Traditionally in Mauritius they actually scramble the eggs. Um, I just kind of made it slightly differently, but you can do it how you like basically, but the flavour is still the same. Um, what I love to do is basically, my heritage is Mauritian, so I was born actually in Southampton, so I had a choice of choosing a Southampton food culture on MasterChef <laughs> or maybe Mauritius. So I chose Mauritian food. Shocking decision. <laughs> and um, for me, Mauritian food is really beautiful. It's not really known much in the UK. Um, and it's a real mix. So for anyone who's not Mauritian, Mauritian food is African, Indian, Chinese and French. So you're wow. half... The, half from Kenya, half from Tanzania. Okay, so oh, your mix. curries, in fact, are quite similar to our curries. So as kind of basically people have moved around and you know things get changed in Mauritius we don't have like a classic curry it will be more fragrant I would probably liken it more to like a South Indian style more curry leaves more fenugreek seeds more coriander seeds um, and it's we don't use loads of ghee it's quite light that's um, interesting because there's so many really strong food cultures Chinese, Indian, French, it's, they're all really strong food cultures yeah they are so Just mix them all up how did that happen why why is it so the island was like, literally only had dodos on it. It was like a proper <laughs> island. It's a volcanic island. Wow, I'm like a science teacher here. So millions of years ago, a volcano erupted in the Indian Ocean and it left all these little islands. So there's Madagascar, there's the Maldives, and then there's Mauritius. So Mauritius is a collection of islands in the Indian Ocean and it had no inhabitants. So people came there to claim their state. So the Dutch came, the Arab came, the Portuguese came, and each time everyone came, they left with them something. So the Portuguese brought with them deer, so we eat lots of venison, we call it self. It's self, isn't it? Um, 
I'm just looking at my mirror, just make sure I'm we're saying it the right, the right way. Um, we speak Creole, which is uh, pidgin French, so it's like broken French. It's kind of similar to like, I don't know, how Jamaicans speak English. Yeah? So it's that sounds kind of cool. Yeah, it kind of, it's like gangster French, that's how I call it. <laughs> <laughs> you speak gangster, do you speak gangster French with your parents? Yeah, <laughs> no, I, speak, I speak Creole. Well, normally mum shouts at me in Creole, uh -huh. and then I respond in English. That's uh -huh. normally what happens. That's what happens at home. And it's normally because I've done like the wrong recipe or I've added too much chili or something. Um, but yeah, so Mauritius, because of that, has a really interesting food culture, and the people are really diverse as well. We have a real mix of people. Um, and so this dish, as far as I understand, would have traditionally have been French and African. So we've started off with onions, and I've added salt at the beginning with the onions, so it helps it sweat, it helps to get the water out. Oh. So it and means it doesn't burn, basically. I noticed you add like, a whole bunch of salt. Like, is, that, is that just to help them sweat? Basically? Yeah, basically, if you add salt at the beginning of your food when you're cooking, right at the beginning like this, you end up using less salt along the way. Oh, nice. So it's quite a good thing. So I'm just gonna just chop up some garlic. So also with the garlic, you were kind of crushing it with a knife before you took the final bit of skin off. Yeah, it's just easier to peel, basically. Mm -hmm. This is quite fresh, this garlic, and it's quite young. You'll know the difference, it's normally the size. Um, and the fresh ones stick, they're a bit harder to peel. So I'm just gonna add the garlic in, and then we're gonna go in with lots of thyme. So thyme's quite a European herb, but we use a lot of thyme in Mauritian cooking. So I'm gonna add thyme, and I'm gonna use some coriander stalk, okay? Just so, the stalk? Yeah, the stalk has got so much flavor, and it's quite, it's quite hard, so it won't break down at this stage, and then I use the leaves right at the end. So I'm just going to chop in around three tablespoons of coriander stalk, thereabouts. That's going to go in. So it's becoming, it's really fragrant now. You can mm. kind of really smell. You can smell it. Can you guys smell it? it smells good. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Oh, I need a tin opener, actually. Tin opener, tin opener. Hang on. Here and we go. normally I would use like a, a mini Microplane, I think they're called. You know the ones that you uh, grate parmesan and nutmeg with? I always use that to grate my garlic and ginger. My tip is, whenever you're using it for savoury, never use it for sweet again. So if you've used it to grate garlic and ginger, don't use that to grate nutmeg it's over a It's tainted. Yeah, it will be. So, so I'm just going to grate about that much ginger into it. And I always keep the skin on. The skin is full of like really good health benefits, like high in antioxidants and stuff. So keep the skin on. So I'm just going to shove that in. Thank you very much. And then I'm just going to use maybe half a tin of tomatoes. And all I need to do is basically reduce this down now so it starts to get nice and thick. Mm -hmm. So really it's like a, a bit of a spicy chili tomato sauce. That's kind of the base. And then I've got three chilies. I like chili. So I'm just putting those in. And that's it basically, that's like the beginning of a rog eye. Now you can either keep it like this and have it plain. Uh, in Mauritius you can pretty much use that as the base and then you add lots of stuff to it. Stuff? Like you can add prawns at oh, the end, okay. so it could be a, a prawn. Prawn. Like some sort of meat or something. Yeah, you can add meat to it as well, but generally speaking we either do it with egg, we do it with corned beef, which is quite traditional, uh -huh. um, and then we also do it with prawns. Okay. So the rog eye is your base, but it's such a good flavoured base, so that's it, I'm just going to let that cook away and then I'm just going to add a little bit of black pepper as well so I can open it just a pinch and that's, that's literally it, we just let that, let that cook for a little while, okay we just let it simmer on the side yeah so you said earlier that um, your mum tells you off when you put too much chilli in so you are a master chef winner and your mum still tells you that your food needs changing look, I think anyone who wins a competition when you're at home, you're never in charge. <laughs> so, like, my mum's still the boss of me. So I opened up my restaurant four months ago. Mm -hmm. It's called La Casa Mama. Ooh. So it means mum's house. Who's laughing? Um, so it means sweet. mum's house. So mum works there four days a week. And mm. apparently I'm supposed to be the boss, but literally everyone listens to her. I go in and I'm like, why are you guys doing it that way? I've told you this way. She goes, no, Mama <laughs> Sheila said something else. I'm like, all right, okay, You called no it mum's house and then you made your mum work there. She li literally, it's like her passion and her joy. Oh. She's like the, she, well, she's the eyes of the business as well. You know, running a, who here runs any kind of catering place, cafe, restaurant? 
No, no one. They're all the other end. The other end. They're the food if you want to come and eat there. So oh, we have one. We have we one. Had one. So one. for anyone who does, you need to have. If you're doing it with family, you need people to keep an eye on the business as well. So I'm here today, but Mum's over there today, yeah. watching everything. Someone's going to do the hard work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, but no, it's it's very hard. Like opening yes. a restaurant is so tough. What do you think has been the toughest thing about it? Just not knowing, like, even though you have like a great idea to open a restaurant, and it was always my dream when I was a kid, I think sort of having that idea and actually doing it is something completely different. So basically when we first opened, I was like, right, I've got the menu sorted, I've got the food in the fridge, I've cooked everything, I've got chefs here. I was running the kitchen, so I was head chef, and I was also kind of running front of house as well. The moment we opened the doors to the public, I literally looked at them thinking, what have I done? Why have I done this? <laughs> can just close the doors and I just want to hide. Scary moment. It was so scary. And literally I was doing like 17, 18 hour shifts. Ooh. And that was for the first, yeah, I would say for the first two to three months. Now we're in month four, like a new head chef and we've got front of house and I'm here and I'm not panicking. Like I'm literally not worried. To you're all right, you're relaxed. So yeah, but we, we specialize in Mauritian street food. Um, taking authentic Mauritian recipes but adapting them slightly, making them a little bit more modern. So, that's and you're in Southampton? Yeah. So I need to take a day trip. That's you do? Is to... anyone Hampshire based around here? Are you in London? No Southampton. No? No, no Hampshire people. Huh? Wow. Yeah, no. So basically we all need to take a bit of a day trip. Cool. So I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to turn that down now slightly and then I'm going to go on to two puddings, okay? So, I'm basically going to do like a naughty and nice type pudding thing. Thank you. I'll just grab that. So, the egg rogai dish is actually in my first cookbook, which is sunshine on a plate. And I'm going to do a dessert from sunshine on a plate. And then my second book, basically, it's called The Sunshine Diet. Um, when I did MasterChef, I basically ate everything I was testing. So I just got bigger and bigger. <laughs> and um, I realized when you're a chef, actually you do a lot of running around. Um, and I ended up losing 25 kilos, I think it was. Whoa! Yeah, 20, 22 to 25 kilos. How? What happened? So I will show you the, the good pudding that you uh -huh. should be eating versus the, the bad pudding. Diet. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's just all about adapting recipes. And I think particularly with kind of traditional recipes, uh, in Mauritius, we don't really have sweet sweets that are, I would call kind of, I don't know, culinary expertise type thing. They're very sweet, like over sweet, like things like barfi, like an adaptation of that. Is that the same as like that's the Indian barfi? Yeah, right. exactly. So it's condensed milk and it's really, really heavy. So I always like the idea of kind of taking some of the traditions of Mauritian puddings and then changing them completely. Right. Making them lighter, yeah. easier to eat, easier to digest and things like that. That's what we need. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a naughty pudding first because, you know, you kind of need some naughty things. And it all starts off with double cream and basically this is going to be a mango and lime syllabus. So I'm going to take some lime. I think all good things start with double cream. Or butter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those two things basically. Two. <laughs> so I've just grated ginger on there. I wonder if that'll be okay. I can wash it. I don't mind. You guys don't mind, do you? Who likes ginger and lime? Yeah. Let's call this a ginger, lime and mango syllabub. It's done. It's so, supposed to be like this. Yeah, there we go. So all I'm going to do is just grate in some lime zest into this bowl. This is what the cream's going to go into. And there's quite a nifty trick after I've managed to do this bit. Do you mind giving this a bit of a roll? And yeah. When you roll it, it releases the juices so it's easier to cut and you get all the juices out of it. Or if you've got no arm strength, you can pop it in the microwave for eight seconds. Don't go over 15 seconds or it will blow. I've, I, I've done that before. When you, I thought That's from experience. Yeah. <laughs> eight seconds is like, kind of like the good part. It's okay, I have biceps. All right. <laughs> So yeah, just a little roll and then we're just gonna squeeze the juice into there. And I always chop my lime at an angle because it allows you to get all the segment, all the juice out of all the segments more easily. There you go. Does anyone have any questions so far? You can hurl them out and shout really loudly. I have lots of questions. So I have one question about your books. So they both have the word sunshine in them? Yes. Is that because you come from a sunny place? What's the sunshine thing about? Yeah, it just kind of stuck. So basically, um, Greg Wallace wants this for like his own, but on the show, in the finals, 
Greg said my food was sunshine on a plate. Oh. So the first bit was called sunshine on a plate, and he's like, look, money with uh, royalties. <laughs> I'm thinking, you've got enough money, well, leave me alone. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was really where it came from, yeah. and then it just stuck, because a lot of my food is colourful, yeah. it is bright, mm -hmm. everything, there's always mangoes, kind of at some point in it. Okay, so let me just chop up this mango as well. So, all I'm going to do is literally just take a few segments of mango, just chop that up a little bit. If you can see how, how you're chop chopping up the mango. That's fine. So I've just kind of chopped the cheeks off, so split it that way, the stone runs right through the middle. That bit normally goes to my mum and she just sucks on it. <laughs> and then I'll scoop this out, but the first thing I want to do is get our cream and pop that in there. So you can see that's just double cream and lime juice and something quite wonderful happens if it always... Yeah, that's it. So oh, wow, it's thickening up. What's happened is it's, it's gone really, really thick, yeah? And all that is, is it's curdled, kind of technically that's what's happened. The lime juice has curdled the uh, cream. Oh, wow. And oh, it's so quick though. Yeah, so you don't ever need like a whisk. The only thing you need to do is just take that out of the fridge for at least half an hour before you do it. When it's completely kind of fridge temperature it won't it won't you'll have to keep on whisking but yeah so that's it that's a nifty trick that's all you have to do so i'm gonna just grab a spoon some spoons there was a spoon oh they're here that's all right and then i'm just gonna fold in the cubes max cubes of mango they're gonna go in so in here we've got lime juice lime zest we have fresh mango and then a little bit of expense and in Mauritius, we grow our own vanilla. Oh, we wow. also get the vanilla from uh, Madagascar. But the ones in Mauritius are so unbelievably sweet and fat. They're so gorgeous, but we don't produce enough to sell them kind of commercially. That's a shame. We we'll basically have to go to Mauritius to try them. Pretty much, yeah. That's great. <laughs> Let me just move that to one side for a sec. So the best way to get the seeds out of a vanilla pod is flatten it using the back of your knife. Just flatten it that way, okay? holding like the actual top of the pod, okay? And then you're gonna slice it down the middle, so length, lengthways. So you know when like all the cookbooks, they would say slice a vanilla pod like that, that's what yeah. you need to do. And then you're just gonna, using the tip of your knife, grab oh, wow. the black seeds. Mm -hmm. And whatever's left, because there's still so much left in here, just shove that in your sugar. Oh. Or if you're making mocktails, you can shove it in like the, sh the syrup for the mocktails, and then I'm just gonna mix that in as well. It's a teeny amount of vanilla. Yeah, it's quite a lot for what we've got. Um, and to that we wanna sweeten it, and Ali nicked my icing sugar icing to four. So pretend it that has icing sugar in it. I'll go find it. Do you mind? It's just, it's just back here, one sec. So just to sweeten the cream a little bit, we're just gonna add some icing sugar. And then here, you, get them, you can get them in smaller tins, but this is Alfonso mango puree and I'm literally just gonna fold in like two tablespoons. There we go, thank you. Lovely. And I'll just open this up. So while I was gone, you just added a bit of mango pulp? Yeah, mango pulp, a bit of icing sugar to sweeten it. Mm -hmm. And I'm literally just gonna fold it. I just want like ripples of color. So you're using the back of the spoon, is that just because it's a bit thinner than the top? Because I couldn't find a wooden, normal wooden spoon. <laughs> <laughs> but it just when you really work on stage. <laughs> Okay, so that's pretty much the base of it. And then now, oh, that looks like fun. <laughs> do you want to do it? Yeah. So I just want to break up just some just biscuits. Smash them. Just literally smash them. So I use, generally I use ginger biscuits. It's got a nice flavour. How smashed up do you want them? Quite, Quite really smashed. smashed. You're going for it's it. really loud. It's all right. It's like gratuitous violence right now. It's <laughs> kind of good. It feels good. <laughs> Relief your stress whilst you're cooking. Okay, let's see. No, that's not great. I don't think I'm stressed enough. Okay, whilst you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and make a really, really simple sugar syrup for my third recipe. So, to a pan, I've just added probably about 100 grams of um, sugar. Nigel! <laughs> I need to turn the pan back on. Oh, there you go. It, oh, wait, it looks so easy when you oh, did it. Work. I can't do so, it. So, I just need to turn it on to a like, high. Is smash enough, do you think? Yeah, that's fine. Let's feel it. Perfect. There you go. Cool. So, I've got some... I don't feel it. I don't know if that's enough. No, that'll do. Okay. So, in here, I've literally... I'm just going to make a simple sugar syrup. So, it's about 100 grams of um, 
unrefined sugar and then I've just added about a cup of water, around 250 mils. And then I'm just gonna open this with a knife. Yeah, very delicately. <laughs> Let's take this as well. Just tip it out. <laughs> really, it's really like crumbled. Okay, we're gonna have to go at this, okay? okay. Best thing, just, just go, just, just crumble, it. it's fine. Or use a rolling pin or think of someone you don't like. <laughs> Okay. Just too relaxed right So now. all you're thinking of is like a crunchy biscuit base with a bit of texture. That's pretty much it. So... And these are ginger biscuits? Did I read that right? They should be. Okay. Yeah. I think so. I use ginger biscuits because they kind of have already got the flavour in them. The flavour, yeah. I'm just going to make up one actually because I don't think I'm going to be able to make up both. So as you can see I've got bits of like crumb and kind of larger bits as well. Okay. And then I'm just going to spoon in this lovely set cream, just like that. Oh, that's pretty. It's actually a, like a hefty portion. This isn't for one. Really? It should be actually. I could eat that. Yeah? Yeah. I was going to keep on going. <laughs> okay, so, and then I'm just going to top it with a bit more fruit as well. And then some mint. So, got some mint here. Got some fruit. Just like that, super easy. Basically, if you kind of, if you don't like mango and lime, which I can't imagine anyone wouldn't, but if you don't, you can just use other flavors. So the base of it is kind of the same. Yeah. So you set your cream. You can do, the same thing would work if you use lemon as well. So you could make a lemon syllabub, and then you could maybe use apple and pears or anything else. Basically, you can kind of pick a fruit and just do the same thing, but with different fruit. Pretty much, yeah. Nice. Um, and usually I would use desiccated coconut, but I don't have any, so I'm just going to use some almonds on top. And that just adds another dimension of, like, texture, basically. Good crunch. So that's it. That's a mango and lime syllabub. Easy. There we have it. That okay. Kind of looks like maybe we could do that at home. <laughs> there you go. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I have to try and figure this one out again. That should be fine because it's on. That one's on. And then... Put this one on. You, put, you press that one. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. So there I'm just going to put that back up so for the egg roll guy. So I'm bringing that back up to heat. And then all I'm going to do now is crack in three eggs to here. Straight into the pan. Straight into the pan. And then I'm going to put a lid straight over it. Grab your lid, thank you. That's it. There we go. Lid big I think it's the biggest one. Perfect. And we're going to literally let that poach. So it will take around three minutes okay. and then that's done. So then you were saying they, they scramble it, but you're just going to poach it. Traditionally, they scramble it at this right. stage and then that's it. Mm -hmm. So in here, the other pan, remember I've got sugar and water boiling away. And to that, I'm going to add some ginger. So kind of some big sliced bits of ginger. And I'm also going to add some black peppercorns, okay? I've made a massive mess here. I'm going to move stuff around. So we've got some space. So the black peppercorns are going in, just like that, and they're going to soften as they boil. And then I also do need to bash some as well. I think so you should do the bashing right. this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just can't bash hard enough. I don't think I'm going to be able to. I can't <laughs> think of anything like heavy enough to use. Uh, so you want to bash it inside this bowl? No. Mm. Do you want to use me? Is there a pestle and mortar around? Carry it around in your hand bag. Thank Ooh, you. Good idea. Okay. <laughs> right, okay, so now a bowl and a random. It's gonna. I don't think it's gonna work, is it? How do you think? Oh, that way. Oh. There you go. Okay. There you go. That works. Feels like a MasterChef challenge. In yeah. fact, actually, they sent us to Cumbria and MasterChef, and we had no kitchen equipment, and literally, I was trying to. Um, crush um, hawthorn berries oh my god and i was like smashing them and i was i was literally on the floor and i got loads of people on twitter going she looks like a native <laughs> like it was actually quite funny but yeah just smash that slightly okay that's that'll do so we've lost a few peppercorns in the process we have but we have enough so there was a black plate that i did take out as well a black plate yeah like a big yeah nice like serving that. plate do you know which one it is Okay, okay, so it saves the day. <laughs> it's his stage, so you it is, it is. 
So that's the one pudding there, and then the next pudding that I'm going to do is all these ingredients make the pudding. So I'm going to literally slice some melon, just lengthwise, just like that. It's quite thin. Yeah, quite thin. I feel like there's a, that's like chef's technique there. I don't think I can get it that thin. I think it's just quite amazing. Yeah, just be careful when you're doing it. They're quite slippery. Perfect. That's it. Thank you. So I'm just going to chop these up. And then do you mind opening the strawberries for me? And then yeah. I can cut some of those as well. So you've done a lot of um, foodie television, I think. Yeah, there so I've done... Chef, there was good food. Yeah, so in terms of TV, I've done the Food Network. I've done quite a lot of their kind of Christmas shows. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I've done um, Sunday brunch this morning, and then the most recent one was Lorraine. They sent me over to Mauritius to Ooh. go and film. I had three days to film eight mini episodes, and as soon as I arrived, the plane wouldn't be, wasn't able to land because there was a tornado. Oh my god! And um, if you ever watch any of the footage, I've got like a head wrap because it was so windy that my hair was flying about everywhere, and I was actually just being blown off. And they, you know, everyone wants to film on a beach. Yes. But a beach during kind of cyclone period in Mauritius is like the worst place to film. And um, they were like, quickly, quickly, come because we can see that like everyone in Mauritius is like the master of um, the weather. You know, everyone knows what's happening with the weather. They can kind of, I don't know, put a finger in the air. They're like, the cyclone's coming. You know, you've got like 30, you know. 30 minutes. So we had a, like literally everyone around me. I was trying to cook and then all the locals were like, oh, the cyclone's coming. She's only got 20 minutes left. And Lo and behold, I literally only had 20 minutes left before oh gosh. it like... But yeah, so I did eight mini episodes, that was quite hard. Um, and also during the cyclone period, you don't, you aren't able to fish, it's really hard to fish because it's so, yeah. so windy. Um, but one of the dishes meant that I needed to go and collect a local um, red, red fish, okay? So we had to kind of fake a scene where I went down to the local fishing village and the guys were like, you're not going to find fish. And I was like, I know, can you just, like, just help me out? Just, just talk back. to me on TV. <laughs> I was like, they'll pay you at the end. And they did, like the guys. <laughs> and um, so anyway, what we did is we took the fish from the, the hotel with us, yeah. like a whole fish. <laughs> and I went on a boat and then I was like, oh, did you just catch that today? And they're like, just staring at me. <laughs> they gave me the fish and then I walked away. But on the actual TV, it looks like I bought it from them. But anyone who's Mauritian would see that it was like grey and overcast. No boats were in the sea. These Mauritians were looking at me thinking, what is going on here? So yeah, that was quite funny. I need to re-watch that episode just to see you know what, what I might even, like. I might even post it up here after today. Yeah, seriously, so please do. See. Where will you post it up? Um, I can put it on my Instagram. So Instagram. actually, yeah. I can What's your Instagram name? name? Shalina Cooks. Shalina Cooks. So Shalina Cooks will be able to see her fake fish. <laughs> my fake fish. Oh, it's a real fish. It's just fake fishing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's done and that's done. So let's just pop that here. And my syrup is done as well. So look at that steam. Can you see the colour of the syrup? It's gone like it's a like, nice kind yeah. of golden yellow. Actually gold. A little close up. There you go. So that's literally just ginger, black peppercorns, um, sugar, and then we need some lime as well. The acidity with the lime and sugar just makes it for a really good dressing. So, generally speaking, you're going to want to um, let the syrup cool down completely before you serve it, but obviously this is real time. So I'm just going to take my bits of melon. And it's mostly about presentation, to be honest with you. So this is going to end up being a melon strawberry salad with mint. So right now you're just covering it with just melon. covering mm -hmm. the plate with melon. And then I've just got my strawberries, which I've just chopped into different kind of shapes. That's it. And then a couple of whole ones, just like that. And I'm going to grab some mint as well. Just the really nice little bits at the top, and then just throw those over. The little bits just because you want them smaller, or do they taste different? They're sweeter in flavour, but they're also like nicer for presentation. So you can just grab a few of those, just like that. Is this for one person too? I would probably go for like the whole melon and a whole box of strawberries for okay. a family of ten. Oh, okay, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm no. really bad. Do you ever cook for just one person? You know what, it was so funny. When I did MasterChef, um, I remember actually one of the biggest issues with me and, and actually coming from like 
an ethnic background, being a woman, we, we don't know how to cook for one. And everything we do, we cook for like 10 to 15 people. Mm -hmm. um, so I was cooking up a fish curry, and they kept on saying, I've got to make my food look better and be better presented. Um, so I thought, right, I'm going to make a fancy curry, like a fancy pants curry. So I made everything, and then I thought I'm going to put like a curry smear and a jus over the top. Nice. But in order to make the curry, I had to use like a 10 litre pot to make it, because I don't know how, I didn't know how to make curry without it being like five onions and, yeah. you know, 10 cloves of garlic and stuff. So I cooked it up, and I remember John and Greg were eating it, and then John had like a, like a film of um, wetness in his eye, looking like he was going to cry. And I was like, what have I done wrong? And he was just like, everything is perfect, it's exceptional, but I want your curry sauce in that pot behind you. And it was like this massive cauldron of bubbling curry. Um, so yeah.